Story time about how this girl pretended to be my best friend just to go on vacation with me. So a little background information, I was 14 and a freshman in high school, and we're going to call this girl Sophia. Sophia and I met whenever we were in sixth grade, and we were inseparable. And shortly after her and I had became best friends, my mom thought that it would be nice for us to go on vacation to Hawaii in two years. She also said that my brother and I would be able to bring one friend each. So I asked Sophia if she wanted to come to Hawaii in two years, and of course she said yes. Keep in mind, I was popular, Sophia was kind of lame, and I'm not even saying that just to be mean, but it's true. So over the next two years, her and I are hanging out every day, sneaking out together because we also live like two minutes away from each other. And my brother decided that he was going to bring his friend Noah. And I had a crush on Noah, and Sophia knew this, but she would always flirt with him in front of me. I really should have saw this as a red flag, but you know, we love to ignore those. And then out of nowhere, Sophia starts dressing like me and starts getting more popular in school. Like for part two. Part two about how this girl pretended to be my best friend just to go on vacation with me. So like I said, she had been flirting with this guy that she knew that I liked. And then she starts dressing like me and getting more popular. Which I didn't really care because I was still her best friend. Mainly because she didn't really have any other friends. So fast forward, vacation comes around and we all go to Hawaii. We had the best time ever. And then we come home and I barely hear from her. Like I was putting in all the effort, texting her every day and her responses were dry as fuck. And then she had this boyfriend named Brendan, which I guess that could have been the reason why she wasn't talking to me as much. Because, you know, you get into a relationship and all of your focus goes towards that, especially at this age. But the only reason why she started dating him was because he was popular. So they break up and she stopped talking to me altogether. She even blocked me on Instagram. So I asked her what happened and she said that I was a controlling bitch and she didn't want to be friends with me, which doesn't even make any sense because I've never been controlling to her. And then she starts texting me like everything was okay and this went on for a little bit. But after a few months, I just stopped talking to her, but I definitely felt used. Story time about why I hate Valentine's Day. So a little background information. I was 22 years old and I had been dating this guy for almost a year. And we're going to call him Jimmy. Most of Jimmy and I's relationship had been long distance. Because literally after two months of us dating, he was offered a job in a different state. And I never worried about him cheating on me or anything like that because he seemed like a really honest and genuine guy. But of course I was wrong because he said that he couldn't do anything for Valentine's Day because he had to work. So me, I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to fly to him, you know, so we can spend Valentine's Day together. And it'll be a nice surprise. So a few days before Valentine's Day, I get my plane ticket and I wanted to do something special. So I wore some nice lingerie under a trench coat. Well, fast forward, my plane lands and I get an Uber to his apartment. And when I knock on his door, I hear a woman's voice from inside saying, don't worry, I'll get the door. Like for part two. Part two about why I hate Valentine's Day. So like I said, I Uber to his apartment and I knock on the door and I hear some woman from inside say, don't worry, babe, I'll get it. So I hurry up and try to tie my coat because I had untied it thinking that my boyfriend was going to open the door. But no, why would my boyfriend open his own door to his own apartment that he lives alone in? So she opens the door and she's like hi what can i help you with and i'm like oh is this apartment blah 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 and she's like yeah and i'm like oh well is jimmy here and she was like yeah so she calls jimmy over to the door i look directly at him and i'm like oh is this like your friend or something and she's like excuse me i'm his fiance so i'm looking at him all confused and i start screaming that he's a liar a cheater he's like babe go call the police i have no idea who this woman is she sounds crazy so his fiance walks away and he goes i'm sorry i'll call you later and then security escorts me off the property needless to say i never talk to him ever again um, story time about how this boy stabbed me with a pencil in kindergarten. So a little background information, I was six years old and in kindergarten, obviously. I'm not gonna lie, this story kind of shows that it doesn't matter how old a child is, they can literally still be very mean and yeah. Well, during the middle of the school year, there was this new kid who came to our class and his name was Freddie. Now, Freddie coming in in the middle of the year was kind of sad because everybody already had their friends. They didn't really want to talk to the new kid. And what made it even worse is was the fact that he was a teacher's pet and he was the teacher's favorite. So he was always picked to go up to the board and be the line leader, which made the kids hate him even more. For example, during lunch, Freddie would go and try to sit with some of the kids and they would call the teacher over, say that he was doing something that was annoying them or really gross. And the teachers would remove him and put him at a table alone by himself. And I was one of the kids that didn't really make fun of him. I just kind of sat back and laughed, which I know is terrible. But like for part two. 
Part two about this boy who stabbed me with a pencil in kindergarten. So like I said, everybody would pretty much bully him and I was one of the kids that just sat back and laughed, didn't say anything to him directly. Eventually we were getting in trouble for discluding him. We would all have to stay inside during recess with our heads down on the desk in the dark. So then everybody act like they were gonna include him. Like the one time they were like, okay, we're playing hide and seek, you know, you go hide. And then they never went to find him. So then this kid actually started getting violent. My guess is because the teachers and principal were not doing anything about it. When everybody was walking, he would purposely trip kids. This one time this girl brought in pencils for the whole class and she didn't give him one. So he said that he felt sick the one day and all the kids went out to recess and he went around and broke every single pencil. And I came in and I found it, so I told the teacher. And then during nap time, he put his mat by me. And when I finally fall asleep, he literally comes over and stabs me in the back of the neck with a pencil. Story time about my boyfriend's girl best friend. So a little background information, I was 15 and in ninth grade. And my boyfriend Jaden and I have been together for two years. In the beginning, everything was great. And then we went over to his best friend's house, which I didn't realize that his best friend was a girl. And at first I liked her. Her name was Anita and she was super funny, super nice. Well, fast forward, it started to become a routine where he would drop me off at my house and then I would call him and he wouldn't pick up until like the third time that I called him and then he would be like, what's up? I'm hanging out with Anita. And I felt super weird because while we were on the phone together, him and Anita were in the car just talking to each other, not even acknowledging me. So then the one day I asked him if him and I could hang out and he said that he wasn't going to bring Anita. Well, he pulls up and guess who's sitting in the back seat? Anita. And they were playing sexual songs, which made me feel super uncomfortable. And she didn't say one word to Jaden the whole time, but she had so much to say to him while we were on the phone. Like for part two. Part two about my boyfriend's girl best friend. So like I said, he said that he wasn't going to bring Anita with him. And then he pulls up and guess who's in the car? So fast forward eight months, Jaden and I are doing super good. And the one day we're driving around and he mentions that he has to pick someone up. Yep, Anita and her friend. So fast forward, we pick them up and I was feeling super uncomfortable and pissed off because Anita is like rubbing his shoulders and stuff like that. And then they drop me off at my house. Well, not even 10 minutes later, they get into a car crash. Literally 10 minutes down the street from me. So the girls walk to my house. So we're sitting in the garage and the girls are talking about how long they've known Jaden for, blah, 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 this and that. And how he drives super careful when Anita's in the car because he really cares about her. So I told Jaden that I'm not okay with him hanging out with Anita. And of course, when I text him, he's drinking with Anita. So then he starts calling me a bunch of names. Jaden and I are still together and we have a nine month old daughter. He still hangs out with Anita and I still feel weird about it, but I guess I'm just gonna have to- Story time about why you just can't bring some friends around your boyfriend. So a little background information, I was 17 and a junior in high school. And I have been best friends with this one girl who we're gonna call Lily for about two years. Now Lily and I weren't your ordinary best friends. We were the ones that would party together, but we would never talk about anything serious. And when I mean serious things, I mean like a secret that you don't want anybody to know. Just for a little example, the one time I told her that I thought I was pregnant and clearly she knew that I was super scared and I told her, I don't want anybody to know, please don't say anything. Um, yeah, in about 30 minutes, I had like 20 people asking me if I was pregnant and then somehow my parents found out. She's also the best friend that you keep away from any guy that you like. Well, I have been dating this guy who we're gonna call Jared for six months. And obviously, now that I have a boyfriend, I've stopped hanging out with her as much. But my whole thing is she would never give me a heads up on plans. She would literally just text me and be like, hey, we're going out tonight. And I would text her back and I would be like, sorry, I can't. I already have plans with Jared. So this made her really upset, like for part two. Part two about why you just can't bring some of your friends around your boyfriend. So like I said, she was getting very upset with the fact that she would ask me to make plans last minute and I would tell her that I'm busy with my boyfriend. And this went on throughout Jared and I's whole relationship. And it wasn't like I would ignore her. I would still hang out with her. I just wouldn't go and party and stuff like that because I respected my relationship. She would also always ask me to not bring my boyfriend to these parties. And that's another reason why I wouldn't go. So the one night she's like, listen, you know, come out with me. You can bring your boyfriend. It won't be a problem, which was a shocker. So I was a little bit skeptical, but I said, okay. So we go to this party and usually whenever I'm with Lily, I get really messed up, but I was trying to pace myself this night. And then she's like, come on, you don't mind if she gets drunk, right, Jared? Of course, him wanting me to have fun. He said, no, he doesn't mind. She calls us an Uber and then she asked for my boyfriend's Snapchat just so that way she could check up on us because I was too drunk. The entire ride home, Lily is blowing up Jared's phone and we just think that she's trying to check on us. Um, no. Instead, when we got home, he opened his phone and it was actually Lily sending him a bunch of naked pictures. 
Story time about how my ex-boyfriend stole all my shit and then gave it to his new girlfriend. So a little background information, I was 23 and I had been dating this guy who we're gonna call Derek for two years. Now at first I thought that our relationship was perfect, of course, you guys know how it goes. But then the one day he came home from work and he told me that he had been cheating on me throughout our whole relationship. He literally had a full on relationship the past two years that him and I were supposed to be together with another girl. But yeah, he came home from work and he told me, listen, I don't wanna be with you, I really love her, you know, it's just not working out. So obviously I go and I find her social media and I tell her, and she just blocks me. She literally just blocks me. And then he told me that she knew that he was also dating me at the same time. So whatever, fast forward, you know, he moves out, he moves in with her, and he is slowly moving his stuff out of my apartment. Like, it literally took him four months to get all of his stuff out of my apartment. Anyway, so the one day he calls me while I'm at work, and he's like, hey, can I come get the keys? I need to get some of my stuff. So obviously, this had been going on the past four months, so I was like, yeah, just come pick the keys up. So he does. Like for part two. Part two about how my ex stole all of my stuff and gave it to his new girlfriend. So like I said, he comes, he grabs the keys, and he goes to my house. He's getting all of his stuff. When my neighbor, who is one of my friends, she's like freaking out, calling me over 10 times. Obviously, I'm at work, so I can't answer the phone. And then I get a text from her saying that he's there with his new girlfriend. Well, I guess she isn't really a new girlfriend if he's been dating her the whole relationship that we had. But you guys know what I mean. So I'm freaking out and I call him and then I hear her in the background talking to my dog. Now, obviously, I don't even want this girl in my apartment in general. So I'm like freaking out that she's trying to talk to my dog. So I'm yelling at him. I'm like, I want her out of the apartment. I'll call the police if you guys don't leave. Also, tell her to get the away from my dog. So, you know, he says, okay, hangs up the phone. And I call my neighbor and I tell her, call the police if she goes in my apartment again. And less than two minutes later, my friend calls the police because his girlfriend started breaking stuff in my apartment and she took my dog. Literally, like they drove away with my dog and then let it go in the middle of the woods. But I guess it's okay because I got my dog back. Story time about why I hate my brother's girlfriend. So a little background information, I was 14 years old and had just started my freshman year of high school and my brother and his girlfriend were both seniors. And we're gonna call his girlfriend Riley. Now Riley and my brother started dating in the middle of the summer and you would think since they just started dating and basically just met each other that I wouldn't know her that well. But literally two days after they started dating, she started spending every single day at my house. I'm being serious. Like she had a whole duffel bag that had basically her closet in it. But that wasn't the problem. So in the summertime, my parents would plan a lot of family activities. And since they were called family activities, his girlfriend wasn't allowed to go. I mean, I think she would have been allowed to go, but she was also really disrespectful to my mom. So after one of our family days, my parents asked my brother if Riley would be joining us for dinner. And he just ignored them and went up to his room. And my room's right next to his so I could hear everything. And Riley called him like for part two. Part two about why I hate my brother's girlfriend. So like I said, my room was right next to my brother so I could literally hear everything. And I guess Riley called him and she was complaining about me. She was like, she's the reason why your mom doesn't like me. I feel like she's jealous of me. She doesn't want us to be together. Which was really weird because I didn't give a fuck about what my brother did. So fast forward, school finally starts. And Riley lived about 20 minutes away from us. So my brother told her that he couldn't go and pick her up for school every day. But obviously I would ride to school with him because we lived together. Anyways, eventually she had a problem with that too. So my brother and I had to start leaving 30 minutes early to get to school so we could pick her up. So the first time that we pick her up, we pull up to her house. And obviously I'm in the front seat and she's just standing there. So my brother rolls down the window and he's like, get in the fucking car, we're gonna be late. And then she literally has the audacity to start arguing with my brother in front of me about why she should get the front seat instead of me. Like for part three. Part three about why I hated my brother's girlfriend. So like I said, once she got in, she started screaming about how she should get the front seat instead of me. So I turn around and I'm like, last time I checked, you've only been here for two months. Stay in your fucking lane. And then she starts crying because she's like, oh my god, your sister's so mean to me. Like, I just feel like I should have more respect as his girlfriend. So fast forward to the weekend, my mom said that she needs to have a talk with me. And she's like, honey, I know you may not like your brother's girlfriend, but you have to stop being mean to her. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I've only had one conversation with her in the last week. And that was to tell her to stay in her fucking lane. And then I told her about everything going on. So she calls my brother down to ask him if it's true. And my brother was pretty pissed off at me, but he wouldn't lie. So my mom said that she was not allowed over the house anymore. And that he wasn't allowed to go pick her up from school until I got my license. So that just caused more problems between her and my brother. So he broke up with her. And then she started spreading rumors that she broke up with him because there was something weird going on between him and I. 
Story time, my best friend cheated on his girlfriend with me. So a little background information. So Gavin and I have been best friends ever since we were little. We lived in the same neighborhood and my parents and his grandparents were like pretty close, I guess. But like everybody in our neighborhood was close with each other. And I always had a huge crush on him. And I would try to like subtly tell him that I liked him. But he would always be like, ooh, don't joke with me like that. Like, that's not true. And eventually, I just kind of got the hint that that was his way of telling me, I don't like you. Stop before I tell you in a mean way. So when we were in middle school, he was always having these like two-day relationships with all these girls and everything. And me, not so much because sis didn't have a glow up until she reached like her sophomore year in high school. And the thing was, I wasn't that best friend who would be like, ooh, don't date her like she's ugly or anything like that. Like I would totally respect all of his relationships, even if they were two days long, but he would literally still block me. Well, the one day we were hanging out at his house, like for part two, who about how my best friend cheated on his girlfriend with me. So like I said, the one night I was at his house and he was on my phone and he was asking me who all these guys were on my Snapchat. And I told him that I had been talking to them and he was just being a super toxic. He was talking shit on every single one of them. So eventually I started dating this guy, Trey. And after that, he texted me saying that I was gross and everything else. When the next day, he literally got a girlfriend. But weirdly enough, he didn't block me that time. He actually started texting me more saying how him and his girlfriend were so happy together, da 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 da. And unlike him, I would be supportive. Well, the one night at 2 a.m., he came over my house and he was like, I don't have feelings for my girlfriend. And I'm like, okay, then why are you with her? And then he has the nerve to say, don't you get that I like you? Like, really? Well, eventually we cut off all communication and he was still with this girl. Well, the one night he asked me to come over and talk and we ended up doing the nasty. And then he blocked me on everything after he said we should both leave our girlfriends and boyfriends. Well, I ended up telling his girlfriend what we did and they also come to my family cookouts time about how my neighbor killed my dog so a little background information when i was about three years old my parents got me a german shepherd and my neighbors who lived next to us absolutely loved our dog and so did their kids like their dad literally put a doggy door in the fence so that way our dog could go back and forth from our house to his house well when i was about eight years old my neighbors decided to sell their house so he told us that he had to take out the doggy door because the people that were buying his house hated animals. Well, the people who had just bought his house, they ended up moving in before he could take out the doggy door. So our new neighbors asked us if we could put like a piece of plywood in front of the door so that way our dog couldn't get through. And they said that they would do the same to their side of the fence. So my dad said, yeah, he put a piece of plywood in front of there. Well, my dog, Gabe... The one night that my brother let him out, he ended up getting the plywood off of the doggy door. Well, my brother literally had to crawl through the doggy door to get the dog before one of them saw him in the yard. Like for part two about how my neighbors killed my dog. So like I said, my brother let the dog out and my dog got the piece of plywood off of the door. And my brother had to crawl through the doggy door to get my dog out of our neighbor's yard. So that way our neighbors wouldn't wake up and know that he got through. But whenever my brother went to go get Gabe... He realized that my neighbors didn't even have a piece of plywood on their side of the fence or anything. So my brother told my dad and my dad went over there the next day to talk to them. And he pretty much said, I'm not going to have a piece of fucking plywood on my side of the fence if you're not going to be doing anything on yours to prevent my dog from going into your yard. And they were like, oh, well, your old neighbors never took out the doggy door. And my dad was like, that's not our fucking fault. Well, then our new neighbors said, if your dog all of a sudden becomes sick or just does not come back, don't be surprised. My dad decided to replace the door himself. Well, once Gabe realized that the doggy door was gone, when we would let him outside, he would literally just sit there and bark at the fence. Well, two weeks later, Gabe ended up passing away. And we found out it's because our neighbors were giving him rat poison. Story time about how I was dating the school shooter. Yeah. So a little background information. I was a sophomore whenever this all happened. And it was around October. Well, the one day I was sitting at lunch with my group of friends, we're all sitting there having a good time when one of my friends dares me to go over and sit with this one kid. And he was sitting alone, he was kind of shy, and of course I did because they had offered me $10, guys. Can't beat that. So I go over there, we start talking, and I realize that he's actually really nice. And he's really hot. I never really saw what he looked like because he was always wearing hoodies during school. Anyways, we started hanging out more and eventually he said that he liked me and we started dating. The relationship seemed pretty perfect. Well, six months in, I think he started to trust me more. Because he had told me about this one group of girls that he absolutely hated. This group of girls just happened to be my friends. I didn't tell him that I was friends with these girls because they were considered controversial. Like for part two. 
too, about how I was dating the school shooter. But like I said, I had never told him that I was friends with these girls because they were controversial. But he would go on for hours about how much he hated these girls. He went as far to say that he wanted to kill them. I didn't think anything of it at first because him and I had more of a sarcastic sense of humor. But he started to sound more and more serious every time that he would talk about it. Well, after us dating for 10 months, he calls me the one night. And he starts telling me about how he's going to shoot up the school. He had told me his entire plan of how he was going to do this. Now, he must have thought that we were like ride or die relationship. When in reality, I was recording everything that he was saying. After we got off the phone, I wrote an email to all of the office staff in my school. But I fell asleep and never finished the email. I woke up the next morning, finished it. I had texted my friends not to go to school that day. I had already missed the bus. I rode my bike to school that day. I ran to the principal's office. Nobody was there. And that's whenever I heard shots in the hallway. Story time about why I beat up my best friend. So a little background information. Her and I had been best friends since we were in seventh grade. Her family was rich, mine was poor, and at first she was a really good friend. She was always there for me whenever I needed her. Until our freshman year of high school, which is when her and I started hanging out with boys. Now my mom was kind of strict. She wouldn't really let me hang out with boys, but her mom was more lenient about her hanging out with boys. Every weekend she would throw a party at her house and she would throw them in her attic because one, it was huge and two, her parents didn't give a fuck what she did up there. Anyways, she would always offer to do my hair and makeup before the party started, which always made me really excited because I never really put any work into my physical appearance. Well, little did I know, the only reason why she would offer to do my hair and makeup at these parties was so that way she could make me look like shit in front of all the boys. So after that, I taught myself how to do my own makeup and do my own hair, like for part two. Part two about why I beat up my best friend. So like I said, I learned how to do my hair and makeup and she went on vacation for like a month straight. Well, when she came home, she threw another party and she was like, don't worry, after I'm done getting ready, I'll do your makeup and do your hair. And I was like, no, it's fine. I got it. She literally looks at me and she goes, are you sure? You don't really know how to do that. Like, it'll probably look really bad. And I'm like, why the fuck would you say that? She goes, no, like, I don't mean it to be rude. It's just that like, I want you to look good in front of the boys and stuff like that. Like, sis tried to talk me into getting a shower for a full like 20 minutes. So after that, the whole night, she's literally being a pick-me girl. She's making all these comments about me in front of the boys. And I just keep brushing them off until her next party. We got ready and I put on these expensive shoes that I had just bought. And she goes, wow, you just like really like to copy my style, don't you? So she starts making comments that whole night about how my family's poor and stuff like that. And she threw up all over my shoes. So I dumped the trash can that everybody had threw up in that night on her. Punched her in the face. But like two months later, she came to my house and apologized. Story time about my boyfriend's crazy ex-girlfriend. So a little background information. So his ex-girlfriend's parents, they owned a security company. Which sold cameras alarms and a few other things so at the end of 2019 my boyfriend broke up with his ex-girlfriend and by march of 2020 he started seeing me and at first we were just keeping things on the down low anyways so after maybe three weeks of seeing my boyfriend his ex sent me an instagram message calling me a slut it's the obsession for me anyways what's even weirder is that she knew everything about my boyfriend and i even the sexual things. Anyways, like I said, I thought that was really weird. So everything that she had sent me, I sent straight to him. Because I thought, obviously, that he had still been talking to her and had told her everything about us. But instantly, he gave me his phone and said, go through it. And he had her blocked on everything. So even though it was weird, we moved on from that situation. Well, fast forward another two weeks and his ex calls him while I'm at his house. Like for part two. Part two about my boyfriend's crazy ex-girlfriend. So like I said, she had called him while I was over his house. And somehow she keeps figuring out things about our sex life and personal things that we had told each other. So my boyfriend and I got super suspicious, obviously. Then we started to think and we noticed that everything that she was telling us were things that we had talked about in his bedroom. And things that we had done. So we ransacked his whole room looking for anything. And what do you know, I found a mini security camera and a microphone pointing out of his walk-in wardrobe directly towards the bed. He took it to the police and tracked it back to her. So it turns out she had used the hidden spare key, which his mom kept under the mat at the front door, which she had known about from when they dated. So she broke into his house, planted a security camera from her dad's business in his wardrobe. So we decided not to press charges because her parents and my boyfriend's parents were friends. So they just talked it out and decided to punish her in their own way. 
Story time about why my mom kicked me out when I was 16. So a little background information. This had all started as soon as my dad left my mom and I. I was like 13 around the time. Well, ever since then, my mom would have different guys in and out of the house all the time. Like, we were lucky if a month went by and she was still with the same dude. Which, I mean, I kind of get it because my dad did leave us for a woman that he had started another family with. But at the same time, it was just a whole mess. Anyway, so she had got with this new guy and we're gonna call him Tyler. And by the way, the dudes that she would date, they would literally live at our house. Anyway, so a week after he moved in, I started getting really close to him, which usually never happens. Usually I would try to keep my distance because I knew how wrong it was of her having all these different guys in the house when I'm only 16. Anyways, every time that my mom would go to work, he would invite me to go see a movie and he would just be really flirty with me. And he was only 6 years older than me. And my mom was 32. You do the math anyways, life for part 2. Part 2 about why my mom kicked me out when I was 16. So like I said, the guy was being super flirty with me, inviting me to the movies when my mom wasn't home and all that stuff. Well, then it led to more than just that. By the way, this guy did not have a job, so he was home with me 24-7. And I was doing online school. So we were in the house by ourselves, 12 hours a day, 5 days a week. Anyways, like I said, it led to more and we started doing the nasty and stuff. Ew, just, yeah. Well, the one day after we got done doing the nasty in my mom's room, we had fell asleep. And yes, we did not have clothes on. Well, at 2 in the morning, I hear someone pounding on the bedroom door. And my mom worked night shifts. So we get up, he hurries up and gets dressed and tells me to hide under the bed. And he opens the door and it's my mom's sister. My sister literally lived in the apartment next door. And she was like, oh yeah, neither of you were answering the phone. So she wanted me to check on you guys. Like, where's Elena? And I'm still under the bed naked. Like for part three. 